Hello everyone, welcome back to my next video. Uh, today we are going to have a class from Homes on Wheels Alliance at the Virtual RTR 2021. And so I think you're going to really enjoy it. And uh, with me is Sue Ann Carlson, the, uh, the Executive Director of Homes on Wheels Alliance, who did an awful lot of the work, amazing amount of work, on putting this all together. So, uh, Sue Ann, tell us about uh, the, a little bit about what's going on here. So, from January 14th to January 21st, 2021, we have online RTR and women's RTR classes that will be offered on the Homes on Wheels Alliance YouTube channel. But what we're doing is we're taking those and doing a condensed version of them and moving them over to the Cheap RV Living YouTube channel. And that's what you're watching here. So uh, this is a monetized channel, but all the money that will you make by watching the videos, you're gonna make me money by watching the videos, all of that money will be forwarded to, from now on and forever, will be forwarded to Homes on Wheels Alliance. So I'm not making any money on this. It will be a contribution to uh, Homes on Wheels Alliance. Now, because this is a condensed version, there's a whole version on the Homes on Wheels Alliance YouTube channel. And if you go there, you'll see the whole thing, including questions and answers afterwards. So while this is condensed, you can see the whole thing by going to Homes on Wheels Alliance. And how will they find that? Uh, in your YouTube channel search bar, type in Homes on Wheels Alliance, and it will come up. Uh, so once you go to the channel or this channel, Cheap RV Living, there will be a playlist that says RTR, uh, Virtual RTR 2021. And so you can see all the classes there in, in order and see them all at once. So next, we're going to play the video of the class, and I hope you enjoy it and learn a lot from it. And we'll see you at the end of the video. I am the, Sue Ann Carlson, the director of Homes on Wheels Alliance, otherwise known as HOWA, H-O-W-A, our acronym. And I'm uh, our topic for this afternoon is about residency. And it's being presented by Bob Wells of Cheap RV Living. Bob probably doesn't need an introduction, but uh, let me just tell you a few things about him. Um, he does have a website and a YouTube channel called Cheap RV Living, and you can find those links down below in the description. Uh, he is the founder of the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous 11 years ago, and uh, he is the co-founder along with myself of Homes on Wheels Alliance. So with that, Bob, uh, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to you and looking forward to your talk on residency. So I'm gonna talk to you about uh, residency. Where do you become, what state do you become a resident of how do you get mail? Uh, how do you get a driver's license and all that stuff? You move out of your house or your apartment, you move into your vehicle, your car, your van, your RV, whatever you have. You no longer live in that house. You used to live at 1234 Main Street, you know, whatever your address was, and you no longer live there. And so you will run across things and they will ask you, where do you live? Where is your physical residence? Basically, there are two kinds of addresses for every American, and you must have them both. The first is the obvious, the mailing address, and that's easily solved. Uh, but the second is a physical residence address, and if you moved into a vehicle, that is not easily solved. But, you know, how often do I need that? There are two main times that you absolutely must have a physical address, and that is getting uh, anything to do with the government, they will often require uh, proof of a physical address. Nearly every state now will require proof of a physical residential address. But another one that will affect all of us, because we're all in motor vehicles, aren't we? We all have insurance. You have, can't, if you don't have insurance, you can't get your license registered. You can't get it. You can't drive it. Uh, and so the insurance company will ask you this question. They will ask you, where is the vehicle garaged? And that's how they'll phrase it. And the reason they ask you is because they know every zip code in the country and they know everything about every zip code in the country. They know the accident rate. How many people, how many accidents do the people who drive around this zip code have? 
what does it cost to repair if you do have an accident? How much is it going to cost you to repair that vehicle? How likely is it there's going to be a flood and your car is going to be damaged in a flood? How likely is it there's going to be a forest fire and your car is going to catch fire? They have an answer to all those things because that's what they're in the business to do. Know those things so they can charge you appropriately for the risk. So you have to be able to say, I am garaging my car at 1234 Main Street in whatever the city and state is. It's very, very important. And you have to do it. You have to give them something. And when you go to get your next driver's license, if you don't already have one, when you go to a new state, they're going to say, where is your physical residence? And you'll say one, one, two, three, four Main Street. And they will see, show me two proofs of that you are actually proving there, living there usually. There's two kinds of addresses. The physical place, you open a door, you walk in, you go to sleep there. And the place where your mail goes. And usually while they're the same, they can be completely different. You must have one of each. You must have one of each in this country to function. How do you get them? <laughs> well, the easiest and best way is to have family and friends who will allow you to use their address and will receive your mail for you. Done. That's easy. Most of us don't have family and friends. I, I, I don't. Um, and not only that, but what, like we learned from the insurance company, there are reasons to live in certain places. If your sister is in a very expensive place to live, that expense will roll down onto you. And I'll explain that more in a bit. So there are reasons you might want to go to a cheaper place and have your residence. So the first choice is family and friends, but that may not work. Another option is if you're not leaving your town, just to keep your old address. Now, this is not completely legal because you are saying you live at an address you don't live at, but uh, it's a gray area. If you're leaving, then you've got to change driver's licenses eventually and all that. The best choice is to decide which state you wanna move in, get a new address there, get a new driver's license there, because just like the insurance companies told us, some places are much cheaper than others. We're gonna talk about now how to choose a state if you are going to move and get a new address, both mailing and residence. There are three main choices that most people use. They either go to Florida, to Texas, or South Dakota. South Dakota is by far the easiest and the cheapest. I personally chose Nevada. I think there are a number of good reasons to choose Nevada. Three other states that I'll mention are Tennessee. If you're on the East Coast, you wanna stay on the East Coast. Tennessee has a lot of advantages. And then Montana and Wyoming has a lot of advantages. You have to do three things. You have to choose a state. Once you've chosen the state, you have to get a mail forwarder. And then you have to go there and get your driver's license. What is a mail forwarder? They receive your mail. You uh, fill out a, uh, a document with the post office that allows them to receive your mail. And then all your mail will go to them. They are forwarding it. They receive my mail. They hold it. Uh, they'll throw it away. If you tell them what you want to throw away, they'll throw it away. You could email them and say, hey, will you open this letter and scan it? It's really important that I see this. They'll open it. They'll scan it. They'll email it to you. They'll put all my mail in a box. They'll, sit, they'll ship it to me. I'll get it wherever I go around the country. So that is mail forward. That's how you get a mail forwarder. And in South Dakota, the great thing about South Dakota, it's a one-stop shop with a mail forwarder in South Dakota, which is why a lot of people choose it. But if you don't want to choose, though, do the real easy way. You want to choose your own state. Uh, this is how you choose a state. These are the criteria. The first is the cost of living there. How, how much is it going to cost you? How much can you save by choosing one state over another? And it's surprising how much you can save. Uh, first is taxes. Uh, do they tax Social Security? Say your only income is Social Security. If you have a pension, does this state tax a pension? Uh, then you might want to think about um, a property tax. If you run a business of any kind, uh, you have a business income, then does, how much does that state charge for tax on a business? The next big thing when you think about how do I choose a state is the cost of having your vehicle in that state. And there's a lot of ways that one state will charge more than another. The cost of registering and the property taxes on your vehicle is a major expense. And you want to factor that in. You're going to have to do all your own research. I don't know the answers. Another way a vehicle will cost you a lot more is inspections. If a state has a particularly an emissions inspection or you have to go back every year for an emissions or a safety inspection, what a pain in the butt. So just choose a state without emission inspections. 
Texas does. One of the ways that makes Texas a good state is the escapees club. If you join the escapees RV club, their mail forwarding is outstanding and they will help you get uh, become a Texas resident and take a lot of the problems away. And they also now, the escapees are in Florida and we'll do the same thing there. And then finally, the cost of uh, fuel. Think about the cost of fuel and the cost of insurance. Uh, you're not in the state very often, but you have to be there sometimes. So cost of gas can be something you think about. A really big factor on the cost of vehicle is if you're going to buy a commercial vehicle. A commercial vehicle is a school bus, a shuttle bus, an ambulance, uh, a box van, a step van. You know, those were all uh, used once commercially. If you get it reconverted to an RV by building out an RV, then that you can get it relicensed and reinsured as an RV. An RV is by far the cheapest way to get insurance. Insuring a commercial vehicle is very, very difficult and very, very expensive. My advice is don't buy a commercial vehicle, solve all those problems. If you have your set heart set on a commercial vehicle, do your research, find out who makes it very easy, and some states make it super easy, to convert a commercial vehicle into an RV. I think you should consider politics when you choose a state. Politics is an important consideration. It might be the most important to you. And I'm not saying which side you believe in. I don't care. It's an important consideration. And that leads into the next one, which is the social safety net. If you need help from the government, some states give great help and some states give terrible minimal help. Unemployment insurance, that's a pretty big one to consider too. If you're working and you get laid off every year, that unemployment is pretty important. I think one of the most important things is uh, location. I spend all my time out West Nevada is very central to all the Western states. I can leave any Western state where I spend all my time and be in Nevada in one day's drive. One day's fairly long, hard drive. One more consideration is kind of back to the safety net. Uh, if you are not, if you're less than 65, you don't have Medicare, you're not on disability, then you are definitely going to need health insurance, help with health insurance, probably. Almost all health insurance uh, is state only. And this is where location becomes very, very important. After 65, Medicare is everywhere. All right, all that's done. Now we're gonna talk about driver's license. I said there were three main steps. You choose a state on all the criteria I gave you. You hire a mail forwarder, you go to the state, you get a driver's license. That's the next step. Here's how you find out how to get your driver's license in every state. They're all a little different and they're all subtly changing. Um, you Google search drivers, license requirements state you have to do that google search google will show you the page of the state where they have a list of all their requirements and then that's what you have to come up with the problem now is that because of something called the real id act we you have to now bring in proof of residency now remember we at our original discussion there's two kinds of addresses there's the mailing address, which is the UPS store or mail messages and more or any mail forwarder. That's not a residence address. And you you can have your mailing address because you have two. You have a residence address and a mailing address. You'll need a mailing address because they're going to send you stuff. Most places now, they don't give you a driver's license right there. They mail it to you. That's pretty common now. It's not always true. Um, and the same with, with the license plate sometimes or titles, they mail it to you. You gotta have a mailing address. You gotta, gotta have a mailing address. You gotta mail forwarder for that salt. But you gotta have a real physical residence and you, they want to, almost always, they want two types of proof. They're hard to get because you don't live in a home, do you? You live on wheels. And I'm gonna give you here a few quick ways that you can get your driver's license. You can take in the proof and get it. The first way, and it's almost always works, is to rent an apartment or an RV park and take in the rent receipt. The re rent receipt is the first one you would need, and that will do it. If you know a friend who lives in the state and you pay him $30, he'll give you a rent receipt and you can take it in. Another document is an affidavit from a resident. Uh, he will sign an affidavit saying you are, and he'll, he'll swear to it in this affidavit that you are a resident of the state and, uh, and then that's one of the documents. Another document you can take in almost always is to buy land. You say, well, Bob, I don't wanna buy land. Well, maybe you should think about it. I know in Arizona and Nevada, 
you can find an acre for a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. You can pay a hundred dollars down, hundred dollars a month, and then you own the land. Make sure the land has an address. If I bring in uh, approve a sale, uh, a contract that I'm buying a piece of land at this address in Arizona, will that be good enough? Find out. And it usually is. Now, I believe this is universal across the country because the courts have ordered that people cannot, the states cannot withhold driver's licenses from the homeless. And the homeless don't have addresses because by definition, they are what? Homeless. What do you do? Well, you allow them to go to a social service agency, a local a food bank, or a local rescue mission, and they will sign an affidavit saying you were a client and you are a resident there. Uh, and so that works really well, and it's going to be free. I'm going to tell you one that's illegal, and probably unethical, but I know people that do it. <laughs> and you, do, you should not break the law or do anything unethical. You drive around town, you find a house for sale, you write down the address, and that becomes your address. And I do not recommend that you do this, but it works. And I know people who do do this. It's up to your conscience. Uh, you're breaking the law and you're lying. My friend has no problem with that. He said, this is an unjust law. I have a moral obligation to break it. He really, my friend really does believe that. Enough, I'm done, I'm done. Okay, I think I covered it all. That was some very good teaching. I think you got a lot out of it. Uh, but this was a condensed version. So to see the entire thing, including questions and answers, where do they need to go? You can go to the Homes on Wheels Alliance YouTube channel. In your search bar, just type in Homes on Wheels Alliance and it'll come up. And once there, there will be a playlist there of all the RTR videos in their entire length. So there will be a lot more info there than this condensed version. Well, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later.